and welcome to one of another one of Connor Prairie's online outreach videos. We are here on this beautiful sunny spring day to look at some spring ephemerals. Now the property that we are on right now is now private property that we have permission to walk, but we are right along Shoemaker Ditch that flows into Connor Prairie's or that flows into the White River on Connor Prairie's property. So this was originally part of Connor's property back in the day. It has since been parceled out, but the takeaway here was that it was all a farm at one point, and before houses were uh, built nearby, it was a dairy farm. So it was been completely logged out at one point or another, had large animals on it, dubiously managed, definitely not for spring ephemerals. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to be hunting some plants that are starting to move back in. This is going to be fairly representative of the area around Connor Prairie and what flowers you can see if you go for a walk in your parks. But it is not the diversity that you would expect from an area that hadn't been as disturbed. So we are going to look for spring ephemerals and flowers that are coming up. We'll see some plants that you can easily ID that don't have flowers up yet. Uh, a quick note. We are on private property that we have permission to walk, but if you do go out and look for these plants at your parks, please stay on your trails. I promise you can see most anything from the trails. Uh, if you go back in the ones, these are the plants that like to grow back in the woodlands. Stay on your trails. No matter where you're walking, practice, leave no trace. Make sure we take care of our parks. This is a Virginia bluebell. It's very iconic in its range, but you usually find them in lowlands. You'll get them uh, in creeping up the highlands a little bit but this one is in its early days it's really small still even the leaves are very small it'll get much taller than this but you can see already down in between the leaves those are going to be the bluebells but those are just the very smallest buds of them they barely have color on them right now so check back with us uh, we'll try to do another video in, later in the spring and we'll check back on these guys and hopefully see them in full bloom uh, earlier i said that this area was still recovering from being a farm this is a very good sign of that recovery. We are very happy to find this guy. This is a small skunk cabbage. So if you've ever heard of skunk cabbages, they really like upland fins, really clear, clean water. So we were very excited to find this fellow here growing. It's only one of about half a dozen that we found nearby and they're all very small so far. So we're very excited to find him. But you might look at this guy and you might think, but that looks like a hosta. I promise it's not a hosta. These guys will start coming up weeks before hostas and the mature plants will have little flowers sometimes even before the last snow melts. They sort of look like tiny pitcher plants almost. Little red hooks come up out of the snow and they will actually melt the snow around them if there is still snow on the ground when they bloom. So that is one of the earliest signs of spring you can look for. It's always fun to get out looking for those. This little guy here it was one of the most fun ones to track down, especially in the early spring. This is salt and pepper, so-called because they have teeny tiny little white petals on their flowers and then the little black spots among them. Makes them look like a pile of salt and pepper mixed up. Their other name is Harbinger of Spring. So that is pretty indicative of why you're happy to see them in the springtime. These are one of the very first little flowers that are coming out. You can see even today on April the 2nd, I believe, most of the little flowers are done. These little spots over here are blown out flowers and these are the very last of the flowers of the year. So you gotta get out early to see these this guys. This is a water leaf. Now it's very easy to identify them on the forest floor. It's much harder to identify which kind of water leaf this is. I happen to know this is greater water leaf because I have seen these populations in bloom in previous years. But these guys actually will not bloom until late spring, early summer usually. But if they have a good year, they can come up a great big tall, they'll be up to your knee, maybe a little bit above your knee. Big clusters of light purple flowers. The bees love them. Uh, so these guys are in their second year when they first come up, their little natal leaves coming up from the seeds. Almost looks like a sunflower coming up. And then the next year they will come up with big leaves like this straight from the beginning. So next to them here, we have some um, woods marbles is what those are. That's evidence of a healthy ecosystem right there. And next to those, we have got a little baby tiny Dutch leaf of a Dutchman's breeches plant. So if you, you can see him, he's very small. He's not completely out yet. But if we take a few steps over here to our right, 
You can see there's a big happy patch of, Dutch, of Dutchman's breeches. So they're so called because when their flowers come up, and these flowers aren't completely out yet, they look like pants hanging from a clothesline. Um, presumably they look like Dutchman's pants, but I haven't seen any personally, so I can't attest to that. So. We have stumbled across here uh, a little ecosystem and a microcosm. So if you look at the soil here, there's not a lot of humus here. There is exposed dirt and it's got a lot of sand in it. That is because we're on a floodplain and this has been recently washed out by the spring floods. Um, if you will start, go through here from left to right. Uh, on this side, we've got some wild geranium just starting to come up. Its leaves are dark now, but they'll get much uh, brighter green as they get older and get closer to flowering. I'm gonna move this way a little bit. We have our star of the show here in the middle. This is Bloodroot, a very lovely plant. Its flowers are the definition of ephemeral. They really only last a day or so. This is an early one, so you can't, its leaf isn't really out yet, but when you see them, they are a round leaf with sort of fingers on one end. And the bigger and more robust they are, the more fingers they have. It's sort of a way to tell how old the plant is. Moving a little bit farther left again, we have a little Dutchman's breeches coming up here. That is just the leaf of the Dutchman's breeches. And this is a young plant. It's not in a great big group of plants yet. And those do tend to form colonies. Moving a little bit to the left again, we have some wild violets. Again, these guys aren't blooming. They're just now coming up. They look like they had a hard time in the most recent flood there, actually. So those will probably bloom a little bit later on. And to just to the left of them, we've got wild ginger. Now, this guy supposedly was used as a ginger substitute back in the day and does sort of taste like ginger, but we don't use that anymore because we've discovered there is a carcinogen in the root. So just because it's called ginger, don't go out and eat it. This leaf isn't completely open yet. This is the leaf all folded up right here. They do sort of crawl over the ground, and this is the rhizome going back into the ground right here. It's been exposed by the flood. Um, there are a couple of other leaves down here just starting to pop up, so this guy does have uh, mates right here. It is growing in a small clump, so when those leaves open, you won't hardly be able to see anything else in the area. Moving a little bit to the left again, you will see something very interesting right here. This is a little ant nest. Now, why would an ant nest be interesting, you might ask? That is because ants are responsible for the dispersal of the seeds for a lot of our spring ephemerals. So there aren't a lot of bugs out yet. So what do they do? They put a little nutrient-filled packet on their little seeds. So the ants will come and find the seeds from the plants, pick them up and take them back into their ant houses. They'll eat the nutrient-rich packet on the outside of the seed, and then they'll throw the seed into their waste bin. The ants have little specific chambers in their colonies that they use for waste. And that is also a perfect place for seeds to germinate. So ants are one of the big seed dispersers <laughs> for uh, spring ephemerals, and you will see Lots of the plants that we are talking about today, bloodroot, Dutchman's breeches, we'll get into the trilliums. Those also have seeds dispersed by ants. Now here we have some spring beauties in prime real estate down here right next to the creek. Now they've got a good view. So these guys are another very early flower. We had to hunt for a little bit to find some that were still out. And they are very slight. You can see they've got Get in here. Little teeny tiny thin leaves down at the bottom. Very hard to see. Most of them is their flower stalk and flowers, but they are cute little guys. Always a beauty to see in the spring. These are cut-leaved toothwort. And you can see they're actually still on this one's got some flowers that are about to come out, but most of them are done already. If you look at their leaves here, they have very distinctive leaves. Lots of times you will just see the leaves come up and they don't have when they don't have flowers up on them yet, but they're pretty easy to ID. Cut leaved, very deep little sawtooths on the side of the leaves. You can see they get a little bit purple down towards the bottom too. Another good way to tell them apart from other plants. Now this little plant in front of me that is actually very hard to see because it is just a stick right now with teeny tiny little flowers on it. This is a spice bush. You see these lots of times growing in edge habitats or in the understories in forest. And if you look really close on these guys, these are some of the first woody plants that bloom. 
and they've got teeny tiny little yellow flowers on them. These are a very good source of pollen for early insects that are out looking for food. And if you get a bunch from growing in a bunch, they've got a really pretty yellow blush to them. If you can find a big patch of them. They are called spice bush because various parts of the plants were used as replacements for spices historically. The name checks out. So this is a good example of a little colony developing here. Blood roots will run under the ground and send up more shoots. So these plants will all probably still be connected under the ground. Blood roots are one of my favorites, not just because they are pretty, they have these really definitely ephemeral flowers, but because their rhizomes underneath will bleed a blood red color if you cut into them. So they were used as a paint back in the day. So these guys are very slow growing, so please remember not to harvest wild blood roots for their roots, and you can grow them in your gardens if you would want to use those for pigment. Now what wildflower video would be complete without a little purple violet? So purple violets actually come in a couple of different colors. We've seen them white, yellow, and purple just in this location. Lots of times people see these little round leaves will come up. Oh, that's actually a little salt and pepper right there coming up <laughs> right through this violet. But they'll see these round leaves, that's these here, coming up in their yards and they'll think, ah, they're weeds and they'll weed them. But they're these little violets. They're really great. The, all the bugs love them. They are also completely edible. Every part of them is edible. Um, I cannot attest to their taste. This is Prairie Trillium. There are a couple of different kinds. Um, common name is Bloody Butcher, though it shares that common name with a couple of other trillium that also have red flowers. We've just barely too early for some of the flowers on these biggest trillium. But that is alright. Now that we've ID'd them, we can come back later and we'll know where they are and we can see their flowers. We do also have some natal leaves, so this is the, the baby leaves that come out of the seed first thing, of the great water leaf that we saw earlier. Here's one that's got natal leaves and it's got its first not natal leaf up. That's what those look like. Well, the sun is setting, so this is going to be our last stop for the day. But we're going to leave you with some lovely hope for the future right here. We found a patch of both wild hyacinth. We are just starting to come up now. They don't even have flower spikes coming up yet. And a couple of little may apples are coming up here on the hillside with them. So the wild hyacinths will bloom late spring, early summer. May apples, about the same. So these are going to be what we're going to come out here looking for in the future. Now you've probably noticed throughout this video we've made lots of references to things that have not happened yet. Looking for wildflowers is sort of like going to the zoo. You've got to go lots of different days, lots of different condi conditions, lots of different times of the year to see everything. So we will be back at least one more time to get you some late spring wildflowers in here and we hope that this has been helpful with all of your wildflower, wild plant ID needs. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.